Hello, and welcome to Containment Breach Three Minute Meets, which are never, ever, ever three minutes. I'm Christian DeMatteo, co founder of Fugitive Poems, and we're going to be talking today about the Fugitive Poems anthology series Containment Breach. This is Containment Breach Volume One Quarantine Chronicles. This is Containment Breach Volume Two Myth Reborn. Very proud of these incredible collections. Awesome comics from indie creators all over the world, literally all over the world. And uh, every story is a banger. And our goal was to keep that up. And we have been working on volumes three, which when you're watching this, this is most probably being kickstarted, unless you're way behind, then go to fugitivepoems.com and you can just buy the book. Uh, and volume four, which is coming really soon. And I'm so excited to have with me today, letterer extraordinaire, also uh, writer, Kyler Merrill. And Kyler is actually has a story in volume three and in vol volume four. Uh, Ky Kyler, who are you? Um, like you said, my name is Kyler Merrill. I am a, an elementary science teacher by day. And um, by the rest of the time, I am a comic creator um, slash um, I just I, I do a little bit of everything, I think. Except I don't color. That's the only only thing I don't do. But um, I've written and drawn and lettered my own books. I run Foreign Press Comics over there. Um, and yeah, that's that's base, That's the basics of who I am. That's kind of this, the bare bones version. Foreign Press Comics has a website? Yes, foreignpresscomics.com. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on all the, all the things. You know, I've never told you this, and I've always meant to. Uh, I love that name. I love the name Foreign Press. I appreciate it. It's such I, like, cool I like y'all's logo too. So if we're yeah, trying to I really like the, the, the hammer with the, I really, I mean, I really dig that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that, uh, that was all James. That was really excited. He started coming up with these designs and uh, we had this concept of comics forged in flames. Uh, and he uh, actually, I'll tell you something really quick and really funny. I wrote a poem that's going to be a comic. I don't normally write poetry at all. It's not my thing, but every now and again, things just pop into my head and I followed it. The night, and I'm not kidding about this, the night that I wrote it is the night he came up with the anvil. So actually, we didn't have Comic Forge and Flames yet. The night that I wrote that poem, the next day, he's like, hey, what do you think of an anvil and a hammer? And I'm like, there's a whole stanza about an anvil and a hammer in the poem that nice. I wrote. And it was really like, well, I don't think we need to discuss it. <laughs> yeah, it's a serendipity. So uh, tell me a little bit about uh, uh, what, what was your journey into comics? It's actually amazing. I'm an educator, too. How many educators I have found in the world of mm -hmm. indie comics? Yeah. Uh, but tell me, what was your gateway comic? What what got you into comics as a fan? Um, I, 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 do, I was always into comics, you know, growing up. Like, I remember just seeing them around. I lived on a military base, so I got a lot of – actually, I have some right here um, – the the military exchange used to put out these comics with Marvel that were just um kind of it says exchange on the corner it's just um like a thing it always has a bunch of ads for it it usually features service members really prominently like yeah. one of them was um these guys coming back from deployment and like Hawkeye's also conveniently in the airport and has to save them for the service society anyway so I was always around yeah. comics like that and I've asked other people I've interviewed um one or two other people who've been in the military I've asked them and they've it been like i don't know what those are but anyways so that's that was kind of my gateway but my thing that really made me want to make comics was in the new 52 um dc did the new 52 and they relaunched everything and i decided i was going to get the comics because i was really getting into superheroes and so i got the flash aquaman batman and superman number ones and the flash stuck with me because francis manifold does the art and his art is he's an amazing artist but I think it fits the flash incredibly well. It's very, it's very streamlined. It's very smooth. Like it just something about the way the art was just kind of shown me that comic art did not have to be kind of the same thing. And don't get me wrong. His art still feels very superhero comics, but it's also, I don't know, just something about it. The essence of it just like blew me away. It really just was like something else. And so I was like, okay, I want to do, I want to make comics. And so at first I was just going to write, but I like to draw. And so I just decided that, you know, I, I always drew comics on my own or just drew superheroes. And then I just decided one day in college, like I think it was my freshman year, I was going through some uh, some mental health crises, we'll just say that. And I kind of just decided that, um, you know, 
someone out there is gonna hate my artwork some of them someone's gonna love it you know because there's people i love that you know some people can't stand and vice versa so i was just like someone out there is gonna like it i'm gonna make comics because that's what i want to do and so i just i made my first comic i made little short ones first put them online that's where i came up with the name foreign press and um then um I made my first whole because like 50 pages done on printer paper with um, just ink and um, pencils on my desk in my college dorm, 55 pages of that. And then we're, we've continued on from there. And so now I have two single issues to my name. I run a successful Kickstarter. Um, I have several other short things. And then I, 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 I've been in the past year or so I've gotten into lettering and that's kind of how I got to fugitive poems and to containment breach, that's how I've um, and I originally got into the comic jam as an artist, and then now I mostly letter for them too. If I ever, if I do things for them, it's lettering, and so um, yeah, that's kind of just um, that's I guess that's I guess that answers your question. I think. Yeah, that answers a lot of questions. I actually think that we're done here. No, um, I I knew you primarily. I got to know you as a letterer. Uh, you lettered, and I'm scrolling to it right now. You lettered a one pager I did with you mentioned the comic jam, the comic jam.com. Everybody ought to go there if you want to draw, uh, or write or make a letter, uh, color comics, and you want to work with incredible people and cut your skill, get it better, you know, really cut your teeth on your skill and whatnot. Go to the comic jam, uh, contact Casey Allen, who's the editor in chief. Uh, and get involved. They're a tremendous group of just, uh, it's unbelievable. It's such a large group and I've never run into an a-hole. Uh, <laughs> it's such great, cool people to work with and everyone wants to learn together. But let's say you have no interest in making comics because you're a fan. Well, then you should go to the comicjam.com every week because every week a slew of one page comics comes out or at least one by Jack Fantomi. Uh, <laughs> And uh, and they're awesome. And I got to do I got to work with Kyler for the first time on a uh, a comic drawn by Tom Beavis uh, called uh, Don't Wake Ariel. My exhausted wife mumbled groggily and it was sound effects only. And we had a lot of fun coming up with this. And this is my first experience working with you. And then uh, not long after that, uh, you uh, yeah, you asked to be in containment breach and we're so glad to have you. That you, we actually put you in Containment Breach Volume One. I'm sorry, Volume Three and Volume Four. Mm -hmm. So, uh, tell us a little bit about getting involved with Containment Breach. Um, I I don't know I don't know where I saw it. Honestly, probably Twitter or something like that. And I just this was like I I was at a point where I knew I wanted to. I knew I was into lettering, like I was into just the the art of it. And I've talked to other people about this on my own podcast, but it's like one of the things about lettering that's really cool is that it's both art artistic and also very like rules focused like you know there's a lot of rules like you know when it's a when it's a like sometimes eyes need a crossbar sometimes they don't and but like there's rules for that like don't cross the tails the line width needs to match the um needs to match the line width of the art um you know your tails need to be um, consistent there's a lot of just little rules and little things about lettering that really help work with my brain the way that my brain is structured that's cool. But it's also very logical or not very logical. It's also very artistic. And like you can, you know, do things in different ways and it helps. To t it's really involved in the way you tell the story where how it kind of guides your your eyes through the story, which is why I'm not super happy with how the Don't Wake Ariel turned out. But um, that's I just think I could have done better. I don't really know how to do better, but I know that I could have. I just struggle with it anyway. Um lettering was just really cool to me and so I just decided you know I, I've been kind of like I said I was doing some for the comic jam and then I saw the, the container breach and I was just like I want to do them and you asked if I wanted to do one or two and I was like sure I'll do I can do two I, I have time for that and then knowing myself I postponed them on and then both at about the same time um instead of I was like oh because originally I was like oh, I have two of these I can you know I can work on these slowly and just kind of make my way through them but no I waited until the end and just powered through um but to, maybe maybe to my detriment i don't know but yeah i just i so i was on space tomb raiders with, with fern lamb and marcus pattern and um which is in volume three i believe and yeah. then i was in the fading with or in fading with i cannot remember 
Chase Bishop and Patrick Hayes. There you go. I was going to say, I, I, if I saw their first names, I could have told you the rest, but just no, because I'm seeing one email, I'm like Chase and Patrick, I know those. Um, but, and then Christian, you were the editor on that. And so that was kind of my foray into, um, into this. And so I, I got, I liked that I was able to take some of the lessons I'd learned before, which um, one I learned from Kevin Lentz, who's superb. He's amazing. He did a bunch in our previous Kickstarter. He's in the comic jam as well. Um, that you always get your get the artwork as soon as you can get. If you're a letter, get the artwork as soon as you can. That way, because you can easily letter over pencils, especially digitally, and then just transpose that onto the final art. You know, you might have to make some tweaks here and there, but at least that way you're not just sitting around waiting to get colors and then finally throwing everything together. You can right. start off really soon. That's kind of what I did. And like I said, that was really beneficial to me because I got to kind of do those pretty early on and then kind of wait for the colors to come in or the inks to come in. And I was like, okay, so this, when they changed it, you know, they changed this. Well, okay, I need to move this tail over a little bit. I need to change the way this is formatted. But for the most part, it, it all went pretty smoothly, I think. Um, you know, there were obviously, you know, like on any project, there were things that I needed to change and edit and I, edited those and you know you know the whole container breach team you and um mark capitelli were both really good about um communicating you know slight details that need to be changed or hey make this uh you know instead of a splurge make this a splish sound effect you know change and that was mark he just said he gave me something something like that he was like i don't think that would make that sound and mark is great at that got me because i was like I didn't write the sounds, but okay. Um, you know, I, I just, I just copy and not copy and paste, but I just do whatever the artist, the writer tells me to do. And right. then as far as the sound effects go, he told me and I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll, I'll go for it. Um, but yes. Yeah, so, and then he, there were some other things that actually made more sense, but um, so yeah, I, I, I guess that's, that's been my story of being in, in containment breach. Mark, Mark Capitelli is uh, our senior editor for Fugitive Pumps. And uh, he directly edited a number of the stories. He is great. Him and James Lines, co-founder of Fugitive Pumps, are great at sound effects. And, and I mean, James will come up with stuff to the point where I don't write them anymore because I suck at sound effects. I just I, I had Kevin Lintz help me out with one for a comic. And I, I, I wrote I wrote this description. Imagine a wet brick hitting a semi-solid wall. And I said, I don't know what to do. And Kevin was, try this, take the vowels out, blah, 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 do this. And it was it was perfect. Yeah. But uh, Mark is amazing with, uh, with, that's the line too. I don't think it would make that sound. I think it would be more like, and he's yeah. he's got that ear for it. I, I'll, at this point, I'll do in the script, I'll write SFX, colon, whatever sound you think blah would do. I'm like, I'm not even trying anymore. Yeah, whatever, it works. It did. It did. Uh, uh, so Marcus Pattern and and uh, uh, Fern Lamb story, uh, Space Tomb Raiders, uh, is is wild. It's a wild yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 graffiti inspired uh, pop heavy metal uh, insane joy ride. It's and I nice. love what you did with it. I love the, the the designs you came up with, and and then that whole thing of matching the lettering. And this is what intrigues me about lettering. And I kind of want to learn it, but I'm scared. Matching the lettering to the feel of the story so that it goes seamlessly together, but also adds a pop. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's that almost seems like a juxtaposition. And I thought you did a, a terrific job with it on, on both stories. Uh, and they're both totally different tones. Mm -hmm. um, uh, fading is sort of a, a, a cyberpunk yeah. uh, story. Uh, and it's it's serious. But it's it's also trippy, and then uh, um, Space Tomb Raiders is really trippy. It, it's like uh, Alien by way of sort of a Hunter S. Thompson Tarantino, uh, and that and you, I thought you match both. It really is is awesome working with you and watching you put these things together. I appreciate that. I think that um, I know that's kind of one of the it's one of the hard things, but also a very fun thing about lettering is like you were talking about picking a, a font that matches your story. Um, because like, and cause Marcus Patton, he asked me, he's like, Hey, I'm trying to learn lettering. You know, what can I, what, what like, explain, like, why'd you pick this font? I really like this font. And I was just like, I mean, honestly, it's kind of just like, this sounds dumb, but it's vibes. Like, it's just like, okay, I have, thanks to Blambot, Nate Picos, I have a bunch of free fonts that I've used. He has them free for indie comics use. And so I have a bunch of 
um, fonts. And I kind of just, I have, you know, I have one very basic font that's for comics. That's It's called Comica. I don't know where I got it from, but I have a very basic font that's kind of just generic comics font. But, you know, then I have other ones that I kind of select based on what they're fitting. And so for um, Space Tomb Raiders, it's one called Milk Mustache, actually. And it's kind of like a, I don't know, like it's just a fun kind of font, but also it's not too like goofy looking. Mm -hmm. And so that's that. I think that was kind of the the vibe, the inspiration, I think, for that decision. But I don't really have like a conscious like thing for it. And that's kind of what I was trying to tell Mark. I was like, I don't really know. Like, I just kind of just like, hey, this font works good with this story. But I did what I did like about it is I got to also do some new new techniques and things, new things I've wanted to do. Like in um, fading, I did, um, I don't know if you noticed, but the balloons don't have tails. They have, it's just a single line with like a white highlight. And I never done that before. I always wanted to try doing that. Mm -hmm. And I figured this was the place, you know, just some, or not this, but just shorter format things like this. Like Mm -hmm. anthologies are a good way to test out new, new techniques, new ideas. And so I I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Plus I think it, it kind of fit the, I don't know how to explain it, but it just kind of helped. It, I felt like it was going to go good with this story. I don't think that that, for whatever reason in my brain, I don't think that would have worked as well for Space Tomb Raiders. No. But it fit with fading, I think. At least you never said it didn't. So I'm assuming it's good. But yeah, so it's just, I, I like to, it's just kind of doing different things that kind of fit whatever's going on, you know? I, I agree that it would not have fit Space Tomb Raiders. And I agree that it fits fading perfectly. And I couldn't tell you why in either case. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. I, um, I was actually uh, uh, spending a bunch of time with it today uh, with fading. And uh, I noticed I, I, I kind of keyed into that more than I had before. And I really dug it. It's spare, which, um, you know, what? maybe I do know why. So Patrick Hayes had this really clear vision for fading. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's got a character that talks in a sort of future patois Mm -hmm. and it's very spare and in fact most of the characters talk they they don't talk in that patois but they they, their dialogue is very spare Mm -hmm. and it fits this idea of another time another place another world uh and i think that the balloons being sort of spare like that work really well so actually maybe i i'm thinking about it i do know why it worked uh and it would not have worked uh, for Space Tomb Raiders, because Space Tomb Raiders is a big, fat, awesome explosion of color and vibrance, and, yeah. and, and it needed balloons that were hardier. The other thing that you did on Fading that I love is the caption boxes have a slash missing from them. Mm-hmm. They all do. And I don't know why, and I love it. Uh, it made it so interesting. Well, honestly, I, I got that from, it was Chase was the artist, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got it from Chase because he did on his original one, he had kind of his own version of the lettering done. And he had it done where it was like a rectangle, but it looked like a smaller rectangle with two little ones out to the side. And so I kind of wanted to keep that vibe up. And so I went with just a diagonal slash instead because I thought, I don't know, I just felt like that fit better. Um, I don't, yes. I think there's way, I still think, I don't, I'm not a good enough at Photoshop to like do exactly what I wanted it to because if I was, better at photoshop it would have made all of them at an angle because like if you like at the same angle because if you get to the um like some of the ones especially in the last page the angle is more like obtuse and not as acute and so it just kind of like that that bothered me a little bit i still think it looks it looks fine though um, i think it works thematically with what's happening in the story where the story has gone uh i i really dug it i i was something i found myself really fixating on um and editing that story, I was involved in that one from the scripting phase, from, in fact, from the the, the pitching phase, uh, which we don't have people pitch their stories to us. We accept them based on what they've already done. But then once we get started, uh, we have people send us, well, what are you thinking about doing for the theme that we've just unveiled for you? And so having been there from the get, uh, getting to the lettering and seeing that that caption choice, I was like yes this feels like the journey was leading to that so i, I dug Good. that I, I, you, I what uh what's next uh for kyler merrill and foreign press comics well like i just said um what i'm working on now meaning in 2023 right now which is when we're definitely recording um 
I just put out a, hopefully just put out, uh, I, <laughs> I relaunched the first three issues of my, it was a web comic. Now it's just going to be a digital, digital only comic for now, hopefully print in the future called Outlaw Country. It's um, a crime Western comic inspired by a uh, neo Western, I guess you could call it um, inspired by my love of country music. And so it kind of has a, um, it has a mashing Spotify playlist. You can read it. You know, you used to be able That's to read cool. it only online, but um, now it's, um, it's, it's, I'm just putting them in PDFs and I redid the first two issues, um, re-lettered them, re-fixed some of the art and everything like that, re-scanned it. And the third issue, which is brand new, is also out. So, and those are all free to read, but I do have a donate button on the websites for people who want to donate that, donate to it. Sure. Um, you know, it's I'm not asking anyone to, but I mean, you know, obviously any amount of money people can put towards something like that is a greatly appreciated. Um, and then the other big thing that I'm working on is I have a another web comic that is called Peter the Fistronaut. It's a weekly comic strip um that's Star Trek meets Calvin and Hobbes. Um, it's about this character, this fish in a spacesuit called Peter. Um, he's the t- titular fish astronaut, and he um, has a cynical robot partner named James, who um, James Webb actually after the the telescope and the guy who is the telescope is named after. Um, and they go off on these planets and just find weird, crazy things that, um, while simultaneously learning how to be with each other and just be hopefully better people. And so, um, like it kind of just started as my I wanted to do a strip. I wanted to just do something black and white, just back by myself, something I could do by hand. I'm hand lettering the whole thing, doing everything by hand, like everything. And so, um, yeah, I, I have, I did not, not posting anything until I have the whole year's first year done. And um, so I'm, I'm done with that now. And I already have the first three years of it scripted. Oh, wow. But, but to be honest, scripted just means um, I have bullet points because it's a strip. So, you know, my strip, my, in like each, like it'll be 10 issues in a chapter. Mm-hmm. So like this one is like, okay, they go to um, a mall planet and get attacked by bounty hunters. And so the first one is Peter and James are in the science store. And then the second one is Peter and James get caught in an explosion. And so that's, that's what I mean by scripted. It's not like it's very <laughs> intense. It's just like bullet points for each, each, and each one of those is a different week. But um, it'll it'll be published in a different week. But and so I just gave you a spoiler for the end of the end of 2023. But or you know middle the middle third of 20 the second third of 2023. Anyway, somewhere in the third quarter, something like that. Anyway, um, yeah. So I have a lot of that scripted, and then we have some other stuff from Foreign Press. Um, I have a book called Sussex coming out. That's our. It's not actually not mine. It's by Nick Good and um, Alvaro. Um, oh my goodness, Molina, I think starts with an m i'm blanking on it i'm so sorry alvaro um there i'm publishing we're publishing foreign press is publishing their book um it's a world war ii spy book has to deal with a lot of um about mental health and things like that and it's really inspired i think and so that'll be coming from us sometime and then um then i have uh, comics from the kitchen which is my cookbook anthology kind of like you were talking earlier you don't like a, a you don't you know an anthology it's cooler when it has like a theme to it or something new that makes it not just an anthology yeah and so comics from the kitchen is a it's food based stories and simultaneously it's also a cookbook like it has a complete recipe with the picture and everything for every food that's featured in those stories and like they're all a lot of them are very personal stories like comes like people are telling like their grandma's recipes are in this thing and i'm really excited by that because i love to cook i love comics and again i wanted an anthology that had a different had a different thing and so there you go and that'll be on kickstarter i love comics later on so there you go exactly is this is it all set do you have all your uh, no it's not all done right now it's um we're still in the the art phase all the scripts have been um scripts are done yeah scripts are all done arts ah, be, being done where i like, would have loved to jump in on that that's right yeah, on my uh, well i mean no, we, we can maybe work in but um anyway yeah so that's that's coming too and it's i'm really excited about that and then you know we have other stuff for 2024 other anthology series coming 
um, which is Smash Quarterly with Devin R. Scott. He's our editor on that. Um, and Devin R. Scott, from whom I just received yep. the Sentinel. And just two days ago, he's the writer of Magni the Mighty, which just pulled a win out of their butt on yeah. Kickstarter, which yeah. makes me jealous. But they yeah, found that, that twice was awesome. and pulled it out of their butts, and it's awesome. It's really cool to see the community come together like that. But um, yeah, got he's a a Savage dude. Wizard with Doug Wood as well? Uh, no, that's Leslie Julian. That was Devin. Didn't Devin work with uh, Doug? He might have uh, been well, one of the big hypes. But um, that's anyway, um, Devin's a really great dude. He's the editor on that. Um, there you yeah. go, big hype. Um, so yeah, Devin's the editor on that. That's going to be a series. And then I have another anthology that I'm I'm trying to plan that I, I'm i kind of thinking right now, I, I'm torn between like a big high concept thing and then one that's just a theme of um, you know the mystery of life. And kind of just people's thoughts on the world, life, the universe, and everything. So I'm, I'm, I have a lot of plans. No, but that's been answered. Douglas Adams told us it's 42. You're right, man. it's 42. It's 42. I love it. This is incredible, Kyler. So, so I want, I want to be, I want, I want to buy every single one of these. I want, I want. Where do I go to keep up with what's out? What I, where I can get it, and what's coming. Formpresscomics.com is where you can find all of our books, everything like that. Um, and the best place to get, a, so all of our you know books are available there to buy. But um, the best place to um, also want to shout out Sleep Sister Sleep. It's a um, comic. It's kind of a inspired by alternative comics like um, Invaders Image, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, from this guy Ian Vanderwalt from South Africa. It's a um, it's kind of a really dark, twisted Alice in Wonderland type story. It's it's really interesting. A lot of people haven't taken a look at it, and they really should. It's on Global Comics right now. The first issue is available for free. Second one's coming soon. Um, anyway, you can find all that on forumpresscomics.com. We're on Twitter, and the best thing to do is to, to subscribe to the email list. At form, you can just go to forumpresscomics.com slash subscribe, or just scroll to the bottom of the homepage. It's there, too. Hey, uh, thank you so much for coming on with me today. Uh, it sounds like you've got a little bit going on. Folks, farmpresscomics.com. Kyler Merrill uh, doing incredible stuff. He's making comics. And one thing you didn't mention is that you've got a great podcast oh, yeah. called uh, Comics Unscripted. Uh, how, they come out fairly often. They come out bi-weekly. Bi there you go. And uh, and I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know why I remember this, but I think that episode 35 is the best episode of all of them uh, that right. uh, also happens <laughs> <laughs> fugitive poems james and i are interviewed on episode 35 but kyler's got some incredible people you're going to want to go through the whole thing uh folks farmpresscomics.com uh the comic jam all kinds of places to find kyler doing incredible work including go to fugitivepoems.com and you're going to want to get containment breaches volume one and two if you don't have them you're going to want to get containment breach volume three monsters beasts and bastards and coming soon unless you're watching this a couple of years from now containment breach volume four kyler merrill's in both of them fugitivepoems.com you can find us at, at fugitive poems on instagram at fugitive poems on twitter at cdm etc at twitter which is terrible it's a terrible name but i didn't know i'd be advertising it and uh Go check us out. The I cannot tell you how proud I am of the Containment Breach anthologies. Unbelievable stories from up and coming, rising, unbelievable indie creators. We are Fugitive Poems, and we make comics. <laughs> <laughs>